All right, so in this video, we're going to grab our budgets from the database right when the application starts. And if I started off this video, you know, getting right into it, and you're like, what the heck is he talking about? Uh, feel free to go back through the whole playlist. And I started from scratch, and we're creating a quote-unquote modern looking WPF application. And I decided to turn it into a budget tracker and to make it look a little more modern than just how I would style it uh, on my own, we're using maapps.metro, which is a library of styles that you can use with a WPF application. So you don't have to do all of that on your own, makes it nice. And yeah, feel free to subscribe if you like this kind of content and feel free to check out all my other uh, playlists and, and videos if you think that will interest you. So in our last video here, we inserted our budgets into our SQLite database, and I mentioned this uh, in the inserting video. Because we used EF Core to set all of this up, sure, it's a little bit daunting, I guess, to set this up at the very beginning, but once you do that, it's so easy to insert data, to read data, to update data, uh, delete data, all of the different operations you would normally do with the database. And let's go ahead and pull up our database just to show you the one budget that we've created so far. Okay, and here's the SQLite database. I'm using DB Browser for SQLite to check out this database. Um, so let's go to Browse Data here, and if we look at the budgets table, we have this single budget. And so the problem now is, and I mentioned this at the last uh, part of the last video, when we go ahead and start the app, and we look at our list view, which should display all of our saved budgets, we see that even though there's one in the database, as we just saw, is not in this list view. And that's because whenever the app starts, it is not pulling in those budgets from the database. Rather, it's just creating a new uh, budget observable collection. And, and that's it. It's just using this as a shell to hold budgets as we create them. So instead of starting with nothing, I want to add to our budget data class another method here, another public static method public static, and instead it's going to return a list of budget. And we can call this get budgets. I don't know how it knew I was going to name it that. And we're not going to pass anything in. We're just going to simply call this. It'll retrieve all of the budgets from the database, and uh, that'll be it. That's all that this is going to serve. So just like the add to but or add budget to database method, this is also going to be pretty brief. So we can say using var db is equal to the new budget context. Let's just return db dot budgets, and we could just end it here and say dot to list. But I'm going to do a little something extra. I'm going to order by when we grab all of these budgets. So in my case, I want to order by. And we're going to use a lambda expression. So budget B, we're going to order by B dot uh, ID. And I want to go by ID. You can do something different if you want. You can do it by budget amount or maybe start date. Um, but I'm just going to leave it as ID and then dot to list like that. And that's it. That's literally all we have to do to grab all of the budgets. And not only are we grabbing all the budgets or ordering them by some way. And that's just another example of how nice it is to use Entity Framework Core after setting it up. And now that we have this get budgets method, we can go back to the code behind in our main window. And right here, uh, the new observable collection, you can actually pass in the constructor a list of something. In our case, it's going to be a list of budget. So let's call that um, method that we just created. So budget data dot get budgets, and it's going to turn that into an observable collection. And then lastly, we want to do kind of what we did down here when we added a new budget. We want to say budget list view dot item source is this budgets observable collection, just like that. So it's going to grab all of the budgets from the database. It's going to set them in this observable collection called budgets. And then we're going to take that list view and the XAML, right, that we saw on the left hand side and say the source of that data is this budgets observable collection. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right here, or maybe right here. So when this starts, I want to see how many budgets it ends up pulling. Hopefully it pulls the only one in there. And if not, we might have another problem. Um, 
I have faith. And let's hover over this and we see count one and let's see the data. 1200 IDs one and two uh, date times, which are correct. So that looks good. Let's hit continue and look at the app. And here we go. We now have the budget here on the left. So we only have one. Let's go ahead for fun and add a second one. Let's say from the 13th of this month to the 12th, I only want to spend $400. So let's create that budget. Oh, I don't know why I did <laughs> 13 to 12. That's why you need validation because of people like me that don't pay attention. It shouldn't be the 12th, it should be the 19th, like that. Let's create that budget. Now we have this budget down here. It's added to our list view just because that's how we set it up before. And if we look at our database, I'll refresh. We have a new budget with 400 with the two date times that we gave it. And now let's restart the app. I'll take away this breakpoint and make sure now it grabs both of those and it order this, orders them correctly. And as you can see, yeah, here they are. We have them in the correct order because we know that this one has an ID of two. This one has an ID of one and we can continue to do this. You can continue to, to test it out. Um, so if we did another one from the 13th to let's do it two weeks and instead 800, let's create that budget. Now it adds that to our list view. Um, it adds it to our database, we'll refresh, there it is. And if we restarted the app, we would see all three of these now. So I guess the next thing I wanna do is what if we want to select a budget to work on? Let's get that going, I guess. And what if we wanted to edit a budget? So I'm thinking about, I don't know if it's easily done, but I wanna put maybe like a, a pencil or something at the end of each one of these rows where the user can click on that pencil and this form will come back up with the data of the budget uh, the pencil was selected on and we can edit that budget. So that'll be my next goal for the next video. Um, that one's going to be a little more intense probably. There's going to be some more things to do, I'm sure. Uh, but hopefully it'll be really useful. So stay tuned for that. And um, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And I hope to see you when we start updating these guys and selecting them.